Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you. Last night, me and my buddies, we all opened up the Raw 20th 12-disc set. Came with the uh, 20th anniversary, the 20 greatest episodes of Uncut and Unedited Raws. If you go to Freaking High 88's channel, I'm sure by now you guys all heard our Christmas show. If not, I ask you to all head on over there and check it out. Last night we recorded a new podcast. Uh, we had uh, Miguel and me, as well as uh, we had two guests. We had Zach and we had Luke, uh, WD Punk Fan 19 and Luke Cara. And um, we sat down and we watched an episode of Raw. Basically, a lot of people always ask us how we watch shows over Skype. And this is just basically us showing you how we watch them over Skype. And you get to hear our discussion. Miguel gives you a countdown. If you actually want to sit down and watch the show with us, you can. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, video commentaries are always very, very cool for me on DVDs, uh, such as TV shows and um, uh, like movies and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if you're going to do it or not, but if you do, you can sit down and you can watch the show with the four of us. Uh, you can't talk to us, but you can hear what we're talking about, I guess. But uh, we sat down and we watched the... Um, what the hell did we watch? Uh, we watched Disc 4. We watched Mick Foldy win his uh, first uh, WWE Championship. This was a Raw from January 4th of 1999. Backstory from this show was I was at... Um, night Nitro this night. It was the same night as the Finger Poke of Doom. Well, honestly, this was taped the week before, I believe. So, actually, everybody knew this was happening. WWE.com had already put it up on the website. And, um, uh, basically, this was a fun addition to Monday Night Raw. Mainly built around, uh, Mick Foley becoming the WWE Champion. And it really sort of came out of the middle of nowhere. Uh, beginning part of uh, Monday Night Raw was Vince coming out saying that, uh, you know, Mick was going to be getting uh, locked out of the WWE pretty much. You know, he was making it sure, uh, known that he wasn't going to be uh, in the Royal Rumble. He had to, in order to, uh, to to get into the Rumble, he had to win a match in order to get into it. Uh, the show kicked off with the first match was Ken Shamrock going up against Steve Blackman. Um, we saw Dan, Dan Severn come down to the ring in a neck brace with a broken neck. And uh, he was uh, looking around. Shamrock and Blackman, uh, you know, it's basically the kind of match you can think of uh, where it's a mixed martial arts match inside of a ring. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, good stuff. And uh, one of the back things about this is that, you know, with the Attitude Era, uh, they, as I kept on watching this, you know, I kept on thinking, you know, what would I be doing if I was sitting at home at this point watching this show and Nitro was on the other channel? And during this match, honestly... Watching it back in its, you know, continual state because I didn't have anything else to change to. Um, it was pretty, pretty good, pretty fun match. I like Blackman, I like Shamrock, two guys that, that left WWE probably before their time was over. Um, but uh, it, it was fun. Uh, you know, every time they do anything on Monday Night Raw, they always, you know, have a... They always ran a, like, a... The, a replay, like honestly, almost a minute behind it. It was a little bit annoying. Uh, I know these are uncut and unedited episodes of Raw, but you know, like every time a segment ends uh, and they go to commercial and they come back, they're re-showing the thing that just happened. So watching this back on DVD, um, what is this? Uh, this is 1999, so this is 14 years later. You're watching the same moment twice, which is sort of like... I don't know, these are pretty good episodes to have, WWE, you know, they give us these episodes, I'll buy them, but um, a lot of these moments that they're replaying are on other DVDs, so it's not like if you missed it, you need to watch it again, you know, two seconds later. Uh, Mark Henry and, and, uh, and Goldust, um, they, have, uh, they have a match which is uh, mostly uh, uh, brought out by uh, China and the Tranny, uh, I think everybody knows how that all plays out for Mark Henry, um, but... Um, Goldust gets the win there for you. The Test has a match with the Godfather. Um, the Godfather is getting beat down by um, the Union. Not the Union, fuck it, the Corporation at this time. Uh, I don't really know why. Uh, they showed the backstory. Um, but uh, I always liked Test. This is at that time when I thought Test was going to be a real big deal. Um, it was after he left uh, the Corporation uh, later uh, later this year that I really thought that he was really going to become something and become a main eventer. But this guy always had good size. He always had, you know, the look. 
And um, I'm sure that if he be, would have been able to cut a little bit of a better promo, um, he would have had it. I mean, he had one of the best storylines you could think of, you know, dating the boss's daughter uh, until somebody married uh, the boss's daughter later that year. Um, uh, the, the, the next match uh, would, would be sort of booked as the main event, even though something came out of it. It was Triple H versus Mankind. The winner got entered into the Royal Rumble. Shane McMahon was the uh, special guest referee, and he swore up and down that he was going to call it down the middle. Uh, uh, when Triple H was trying to roll Mankind up, uh, he was sort of behind him. Uh, Shane came and kicked him right in the face and gave him a fast three. Uh, it was sort of the lead to uh, Triple H... Uh, leaving DX and joining up with um, the corporation. I believe that would be at WrestleMania um, that year. Also later on in this show, uh, we got to see um, Shawn Michaels, who was sort of like the commissioner of the WWE. Uh, he was going through a time period at that time, leaving the... Um, uh, the you know the the group that was led by Vince McMahon and he was you know sort of rejoining DX and he was calling things uh, on the other side but then he gets attacked later on in the show and um, I never really knew it I just talked about this in a video just the other day but Miguel was explaining to me that uh, it was actually uh, Triple H that that did it to him and and put him out um, but uh, Triple H ends up getting the spot to go into the Royal Rumble. After the match was over, um, Triple H gave Shane McMahon a pedigree, which doesn't really make sense now that they're saying that, that, that that's where they were going with that whole angle, which left him laying on the ground. Mankind came up behind him, and it almost looked like it was going to be seen re right out of deliverance. Uh, but he puts him in a, a, a move, uh, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's basically just ripping the arm out of the socket on, uh, on Shane McMahon. Vince and the, uh, and the goons come down. And uh, he's given a WWE Championship shot, no DQ, uh, that night. Um, Edge fights D'Lo Brown, and what we see was um, D'Lo Brown had knocked up uh, Terry Runnels and uh, PMS at that time. And um, this was the whole thing where D'Lo bumped Terry. She fell off the thing, and she had a huge uh, uh, miscarriage right there on the side of the ring. He was big old dramatic uh, TV Um then we go to a WWE Hardcore Championship match. This was honestly, I didn't know that it was this match until it was later on in the match, but uh, this was one of my favorite hardcore matches of all time with Road Dogg and Al Snow going out of the arena and fighting in the streets. It was a, uh, a pile driver uh, through a wood pallet in the snow where Road Dogg got the win and kept the Hardcore Championship. And then in the... Um, no disqualification match with the WWE Championship. We see Mankind beat The Rock, do the unthinkable, winning the WWE Championship. This match was none other than basically a uh, lumberjack match with DX out there and the corporation out there surrounding the ring. Um, basically, DX is sort of calling it down the middle and they're not really getting involved in this match at all. It didn't really make any sense. Every time The Rock... Uh, was getting pinned by Mankind Corporation would jump in. Every time Mankind was down on the ground and he was about to get pinned before he kicked out, DX never really did anything. But at one point, Shamrock jumped into the ring, which Billy Gunn uh, said, all right, it's go time. He jumped in the ring, and then basically all hell broke loose, and everybody's fighting around on the outside, which led to Stone Cold Steve Austin making his first appearance on this show. The crowd went ballistic balls crazy, which is pretty funny because Mankind was the guy who uh, won the strap that night. But um, this, this was really, really good. It was really, really fun. Um, and uh, Mankind got the pin. Yo, Adrian, I did it. I'm not, I, I don't want to sound at the risk of not being very cool right now, but he thanked his, uh, thanked his kids. Uh, but one of the best editions of Monday Night Raw, I'm sure that if you don't have the 20th anniversary set, like me, maybe you have it on a regular bootleg DVD, but at least now you have it with no commercials in there. No Lithum and Akita or anything like that. But um, The Rock vs. Mankind. This is a great match. I'm sure it's on all of the uh, the Best of Raws, Volume 1, Volume 2, 15th Anniversary, probably the 20th Anniversary, uh, probably, oh, this is the 20th, whatever it is. The 10th Anniversary, Raw 1000. I'm trying to read all the DVDs off the shelf. But um, I got it all right here. And uh, we'll continue watching these and uh, getting those videos up for you soon. But make sure you head on over and check those out. Peace out.